of the 8th of September, a United Nations helicopter flies into Dili, the capital of East Timor. It's bearing the bodies of three United Nations High Commission for Refugees workers, murdered by militias at the UNHCR compound in the West Timorese town of Atambua. The state of the bodies is such that the UN is unable to tell which body is in which coffin. The bodies were dragged and burned, dragged out of the office, uh, in the compound, in front of the office, and they were burned. Shot, one was beheaded, and one was disemboweled. Yeah. The horrific nature of the attack has at last refocused the world's attention on the militias and the East Timorese refugees they still hold hostage. This is just too much, and my hope is that it will lead to decisive action against this cancer called the militia. It's about time that we address it at the root and treat them for what they are, killers and nothing but killers. But for the time being, the UN has pulled out completely leaving 100,000 East Timorese refugees behind in the squalid camps in West Timor, in the hands of the very militia whose acts of terror last year forced them to leave. It's just what the militia wanted. Corners was in Timor as these events unfolded, on the last refugee boat out of West Timor before the UN operation ceased, on the last journey home. days before the killing of the UN workers. We arranged to take the boat from the capital of East Timor, Dili, to the capital of West Timor, Kupang, still part of Indonesia. We're going to collect around 200 refugees still held hostage in the camps in West Timor, a year after East Timor voted overwhelmingly for independence. All the roads leading to the border are blocked by the militias, so this boat is their only way out. It's an overnight trip from Dili to Kupang, 150 nautical miles. The captain has received a radio message warning him that the day before, hundreds of militia had fired shots and stoned the parliament building in Kupang. His head office in Manila is worried. Well, uh, we received uh, information uh, this morning from our office in Manila that uh, the crew are not allowed to go ashore tomorrow because of this uh, trouble. Because the militia will come to the port and that's try what, to make trouble? That, yeah, that's what, the, that's what we heard from them. Next morning, the port is quiet. There's no sign of trouble. Jake Moreland from the United Nations High Commission for Refugees is already down at the wharf. Yeah. How many refugees are coming on today? 200. Is that a bit more than you expected? A little bit more, but even so, we, normally we take about five, six hundred, so... The refugees arrive in buses from the transit centre, where they've spent the last week waiting for the boat behind armed guards. As they unload their possessions, the Indonesian military, the TNI, are watching. It's their job to provide the security for those who want to return. Uh, 
The militia have made it clear many times before that they'll take the law into their own hands to stop repatriation. Repatriation is normally the target for violence, uh, along with food distribution. We have had incidents down here at the port with UNHCR workers, IOM workers being threatened, uh, people coming up to them and doing this. Uh, so this is the sort of thing, intimidation, uh, threats, uh, sometimes physical violence. Refugees are often pulled off the bus, they are beaten up in front with the TNI standing by watching. Uh, humanitarian workers are told to step aside. There's not much we can do, we are not soldiers, we can tell people to stop. But in the end, we, we are not the bosses here. We are not 100% in control. The UNHCR is worried that there's more trouble coming soon, because in a few days' time, it will be the anniversary of the announcement of the referendum results. The militia are very sensitive about this, and they want East Timor back. So do you expect more incidents over the next two weeks? We expect the situation to get worse before it gets better. What sort of incidents? <laughs> the situation is unpredictable. The flood of refugees back from west to east has in recent months slowed to a trickle. Many have been intimidated, some are ambivalent, some committed crimes in the violence last year and are unsure what that will mean for them when they return. Only a handful have managed to make it from the border town of Atambua. 350 kilometers away. These are people who have traveled throughout the night to get here to too frightened to, to tell their friends and families that they're leaving because they're afraid that the militia will find out or other groups in the camps. A lot of them have been held virtually captive in these camps. Uh, it's not an easy decision to decide to return. Uh, they don't receive accurate enough information about what's going on in East Timor. Uh, so these, these, these are brave people, but at the same time, they're very frightened people. The UNHCR doesn't know precisely how many people are still left in the camps. They work with a figure of 120,000, of whom they reckon 70 to 80 percent want to go home. They tried to do a register earlier this year, but were prevented by the militia, who use the refugees as a source of income. They did not want us to have a credible figure on refugees. Maybe they know that the figure that we use now is inflated. They inflate the figure so they can cream off exactly. money from the aid that's provided to help exactly. the refugees. Exactly. It's early afternoon by the time everyone is loaded on and the boat is on its way. It's been a long wait for the many who fled East Timor a year ago to escape the violence that erupted when the referendum result was announced. <laughs> Julio Fernandez was one of the men who burnt down the houses. He was an East Timorese member of the Indonesian Army, the TNI. Teman saya sebagai anggota TNI, saya juga sudah lama mengabdi kepada Nusa dan Bangsa. Ya. Saya kan punya atasan, diperintahkan, bukan dalam arti kata saya merampas, saya membunuh, atau saya ambil barang orang, tidak. Tapi semua saya dengan beberapa teman, termasuk milisi, kita melakukan pembumi hanguskan. Mungkin antara sembilan atau sepuluh rumah. Julio was then ordered by his Indonesian commanders to move to West Timor. He was told it would just be a temporary stay. Eleven months later, he knows that's a lie. <laughs> 